So I just want to say, welcome everyone to tonight's cooking demo, which is part of our Milton Grows initiative. Nice to see you all here. This program is being recorded for Milton Access Cable so others can view it later on. Uh, the, this virtual demo is funded by the Federal Library Services and Technology Act, administered by the MBLC, and also supported by Sustainable Milton and the Friends of the Milton Public Library. And I think Connie told you quite a bit about what's been happening. It's been really a fun year with all the gardening uh, related topics. So if you have questions during the program, please put them in the chat box, which I'll be monitoring, and I will pose them at the end of the recipe, I have the recipe, <laughs> the end of the <laughs> demo to our chef. Um, now, let me tell you about my friend, Connie Spiros. She decided to follow her passion for food and entertaining after a long career in financial services. So she went to cooking school to learn from some of the greats, including Jacques Papin and Julia Child. She offered cooking classes in the metro Boston area and hosted a Milton Cable show called Meet Me in the Kitchen, creating more than 50 shows filled with tasty recipes for home cooks looking for inspiration. Her mantra today is, cooking should be fun based on a simple recipe with quality ingredients and best when shared with people you enjoy. This presenter and I have been working together on programs for many years, and I so appreciate her hard work and her wonderful creative spirit. Now, please join me in a warm welcome for Connie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jean, so much. Those are lovely words, and most of them are true. <laughs> <laughs> the part about working with Jean is definitely true. We worked for many years putting programs together. Best time, best time. So um, we are going to start with the peach and blueberry crumble. So if you have your recipes and you want to follow along or you're cooking with me, first thing I want to do is talk about what you do with peaches that are not as ripe as you want them to be. So I, when I sent out the recipe, I said, make sure you buy peaches like days before. Well, did I follow my own uh, words? No. So I went to the grocery store today and the peaches were rocks. And um, put peaches in it with a banana. And the banana, the gases of the banana help the peach to ripen more quickly. And it will, it will be even better tomorrow or the next day but what I've done is, I'll, first of all, I'll show you the banana. Banana was totally, um, oops, I don't never remember which way to do this. The banana was totally yellow. It had no um, color of bruising on it. So it's given up some of its ripeness to the peach, which is fine by me. We'll eat the, we'll eat the banana, we'll mush that up. And the peach is still a hard, but it's soft enough to be able to take the next step. So I'm having trouble with this camera here. Hold on one second. I have to put my light like this. There we go. So um, what I'm going to do also is show you how to peel a peach because, uh, and the same principle follows for tomatoes. If you have a recipe that says uh, peel tomatoes, don't try and peel them with by your hand. And I'm sure everybody knows this, but I'm going to grab a knife and I've got some boiling water behind me in a pot and um, large enough to hold the, the uh, oh, actually, large enough to hold the peach. So what you do is you make a little X on the bottom and just a bit of an X. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and I'm gonna toss this in, not toss it actually, cause I'll, kill, I'll uh, burn myself. I'm gonna toss it into the pot with my glove on cause this pot gets very hot. And I'm gonna put it in for 30 seconds. And I'm going to, uh, time it sort of, um, and I'm gonna turn it around and it's okay if the water doesn't cover the whole thing, but you do wanna turn it around so that that bottom side gets trucked on the bottom and the top side gets on the bottom as well. So um, 30 seconds to a minute and we're gonna get ice water, which is, I've got water here and I've got some ice. I'm just gonna put some ice in this water and I want this, I don't want the peach to cook. I just want it to get soft enough to relieve its skin, release it from its skin. So I'm gonna grab the peach now. I hope you can hear me. I'm sorry, I'm not facing the camera there. So I think that's close to 30 seconds. I'm gonna give it a couple more seconds. I'll show you meanwhile what I've done. So this is the bowl of peaches. This is um, one pound of peaches turned out to be about four peaches. And um, I peeled them and I sliced them thick and I made these last week and I found that um, the peaches, the pieces were too big because I'm making them into ramekins. 
If you were making this in an eight by nine pan, that would be fine. But um, if you're making it in ramekins, which are smaller, the smaller size peach does better. So I'm gonna take it out. I'm just gonna pop it in the ice water. I'm gonna let it sit there and cool down for a minute. And I'm gonna talk to you about the rest of the ingredients. So um, with the peaches, I'm going to add the basic ingredients that you could add. And by the way, this recipe was an Ina Garten recipe that I added to. So there is no such thing as an original recipe. I'm sure you know that. Every recipe comes from somebody and everybody tweaks them. So this is an Ina Garten. I know a lot of you like Ina Garten as I do. Um, and so I just added a couple of my favorites like walnuts and um, something else I can't remember. Oh, the zest, I guess, the lemon zest. I love lemon zest and anything like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some lemon zest. I mentioned to everybody before uh, early on, this is the, the zester micro, microplane grater. You just you take, you hold it upright and upside and you um, just run it across the dry but clean lemon. You don't want to go too far in because that's where the, the um, kind of pith, which is not very um, sweet is. You don't want the bark bitterness of the pith. And I just want about a teaspoon. And a teaspoon is, is just shy of a, it depends on the size of your lemon. So I'm gonna take this and just add the lemon zest. And it is one uh, teaspoon, yeah, one teaspoon grated lemon zest. I'm going to now cut this lemon and squeeze it and get, I think it's a tablespoon of lemon juice, which is about half of a lemon. So these are all things that you do all, all these recipes, by the way, are super easy. They're not, there's nothing. I mean, you've probably made some of these yourself, but this recipe I like because I've made it with apples. I've made it with pears. You can really change it up. And it's a really good thing to, uh, to enjoy in many, in any season. And I'm going to measure this because I like to be accurate at home when I'm cooking, which is what I'm doing now, actually <laughs> at home. Uh, but I just want to show you, it's just about a little bit over a tablespoon because this is a good size lemon. So that goes in there as well. And we're going to add, um, oh, you know what I'll do now? I'll take this other lemon out and see if it in fact is, yes, yeah, see, now I don't know if you can see that, but the peel is just coming right off and makes it so easy. And if you're making tomato sauce, this is what you want to do. Get batches of tomatoes and just put them in 30 seconds to a minute with a little X on the bottom and it just gives you your cutting point and the skin just comes right off. So it's super easy. All right, so let me cut this up. What's funny is when you take the skin off, these things are very slippery, but it opens up really easily because it's been warmed up a bit. I think that probably pulls the uh, pit out and you can see it's just a beautiful peach. Um, and I'm going to cut it into big wedges and I'm going to get this out of the way and this out of the way and then cut it in half. And I'm going to add it to the other peaches I already have. And um, one thing that I learned, so I went to BU cooking school many years ago and Christopher Kimball came to teach us. And he's from Milk Street now, but he was with America's Texas Kitchen. And, and I was a student. I didn't know what I was doing. And we all had our peaches. We were making apple pie and we all had our apples cut in half and up, like cut side up, and he walked around and, and said, what are you doing? You're gonna hurt yourself that way. So now I'm really cautious to be sure, turn the apple or turn the peach down, cut side down, much easier to cut and much safer to cut that way. So just a little a little helpful hint. All right, so back to our peaches that are here. Now we're gonna add some sugar, a quarter cup of white, just basic white granulated sugar. You can cut this back if you find, you know, make it this way the first time and then try it and see if you find it's too sweet or it needs a little bit more. And two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And we're gonna mix this together. And this is basically going to absorb some of the juice, thicken it up and make it like a little bit of a sauce. That's what flour does, as we know. And if you were gluten-free, you could use cornstarch and that would be fine. And um, the last thing we do then is we add the blueberries. I'm just following along here. And it says a half a cup of blueberries. I added a few extra just because I love blueberries. And so there's nothing more beautiful than the colors of these two, especially with the little red of the insert of the peaches. Okay. So pretty. Anybody have any questions as we go now? Jean's uh, 
monitoring the chat here. And if you've got a question, type it in or yes. raise your hand and somebody can. Yep, the chat's open. Please send me any questions. I'll try to, to ask Connie at the end of each recipe. Okay. Let me clean up my my station here a little bit. I have a towel right here. Okay. So that gets set aside um, for about five minutes. And then I'm going to fill it into the ramekins. We're going to fill the ramekins with it. And I'll just show you the ramekins. The ramekins are all different sizes. I don't have one size. Ramekins is. And you know, the reason I like making it in ramekins is pretty obvious. I will eat the whole thing if it's in a pie. I can't help myself. I love fruit and I figure, oh, it's healthy, it's fruit. I don't talk about or think about the sugar and all the other stuff that's in there. So I would very definitely suggest if you're like me and you want to measure your, your eating, then get these ramekins and just make it in smaller servings. And even if you're having people over, it doesn't matter. You can stick them in the fridge, you can freeze them and they're perfect. So I did add a little bit of spray inside just to make it easier when you're eating it to um, enjoy it without having everything stick. Okay, um, flip over to the crumble now, which is on the uh, second page. And I'm just gonna leave my instructions here. So I need to get my ingredients for that. Okay. Actually, I'm going to put these like this so they're not in the way. All right, so we've got the crumble ingredients. So that is a half a cup of flour, quarter cup of oats, three tablespoons of sugar, some light brown sugar, two tablespoons, and some salt and some cinnamon. And then we're going to add some butter. So um, I'm going to, and oh, by the way, oven on 350. If anybody's making this, make sure your oven's started for 350. So um, so I am going to stir together. You see that in here? Yes, the flour, the oats. And you know, this is called mise en place. If you're cooking along, maybe you did this in advance, maybe not, and you may be measuring things out. So I apologize if I move more quickly. But for those who aren't cooking, I want to make sure that we kind of move this along. Um, and what's next? The granulated sugar, which is three tablespoons. And this is a plate, again, where you could go back to two tablespoons, and that would be fine. Um, and two tablespoons of brown sugar. And I like to break it up, although this is pretty broken up already, but just to be sure that it's not really clumpy. And uh, salt, I'm gonna just do. So one thing with salt, this recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon. It probably started with a teaspoon. I never do a teaspoon of salt. I will almost always cut things back. And if I can, I, I cut things back to like a quarter of a teaspoon because I really don't, we don't need that, um, that much salt, especially with all the flavors that are in here. And then the last thing is cinnamon. And the cinnamon is a pinch. So I've got a, I like a half pinch because I love cinnamon. So I'm going to put, that's probably a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm going to mix this around with something. Okay, I'm going to mix this around. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is add the butter. So I'm going to show you the butter and the easiest way to deal with butter. And I'm sure those of you who watch cooking shows, you know what I'm about to do. And that is, I've got a uh, um, a grater, <laughs> and I'm going to grate the butter right into the bowl. If the butter is cold, so that's the good news. And I'm going to just grate it right into the bowl, and it uh, it comes, and you'll see it in a second. I'll show you how it looks. Oops. We're not very much in the camera here. Um, and you gotta watch out for your hands, which I'm notoriously good at not doing. Um, and we'll get it to the point where it's, all, now it does get warm because of your hands and all that, but you know what? It's much better than it would be um, taking the time to cut it. And honestly, I'm, I've got gloves, so I'm gonna wear gloves to mix this up, but you know, it's a mess to try and do this. You could do this in a mixer though. I should have told you that. You can do this in a mixture and just wait a mixer and just wait to add the 
walnuts or pecans if you're using them until you've finished mixing it. So um, it does get a little bit, um, what's the word? It gets a little soft from the mixer because the mixer can easily over process it. And um, can you see that now? This is like the butter. Butter, is this like the easiest way to get butter into something that's baked, that you're, you know, some baking product that you're making? So I do this a lot now. Okay. And I'm going to wash the hands one more time. So did I put everything in? That's one of the reasons I do mise en place, but sometimes I forget. So if I'm missing something, please let me know or raise your hand or text Jean or whatever. Um, okay. I'm going to put gloves on just because it's easier to do this. And what you want to do is get this to a texture where it's, of course, my hands are wet now, so these gloves aren't going to work, but we'll get there. Um, we want to get it to a, it says, you know, like peas or crumbs that are the size of peas. Don't worry about it. This is a crumble. This is not anything very fancy. So it's intended to be just very easy to mix in and uh, get into the into these ramekins. So I'm mixing it up. You basically, you're squeezing the butter and getting it covered in flour. You want every piece of butter that's there covered in flour. And um, that's it. So this is the time when I always tell people about King Arthur flour. So I use King Arthur flour almost exclusively. And I like it because it's local, first of all, and it's a great company. But they offer cooking classes. And I just want to highly recommend their cooking classes are fabulous. So during the pandemic, I took, I want to say I took 30 classes in three years. I just loved it. I learned all kinds of stuff and uh, just really, really great. They're not cheap, but they were so entertaining. And the people who do them, teach them are so good. Um, that, and I'm still doing it now just because I, I, I love to continue to learn. And I learned how to make pasties and I learned how to make a Victoria sponge and all kinds of things that I would never ramen, <laughs> things I would never do on my own. Okay. So that is it. We take the last thing, which is the, I'm using pecans. So can you see what this looks like? It's very crumbly. There's some bigger pieces, not a big deal. I'm going to put some pecans, and I think that was a quarter cup. Uh, yeah. Um, and this, I don't toast them. I don't worry about toasting them. There is no need for that. OK, so last thing we're going to do now is fill these ramekins. I'm going to put them on a tray. So let me get that here. Hold on a second. Got to wipe my board so that the tray doesn't stick. Okay. So I'm keeping my gloves on because one of the things that's good to do is you want to get the topping a little clumpy. But first, I'm going to put these, the fruit in the pans, in the ramekins. And ramekins can go in the oven. They're perfectly oven safe. You know, I used to make a lot of desserts in mason jars because I love the look of mason jars. And all of a sudden, I read an article recently from Ball Jar Company, and they said, you know, uh, we've just heard that it may not be safe. <laughs> and I thought, no, that's terrible. So this is, I've got a little bit more than six ramekins worth, and that's not a problem because I'm going to just stuff them in there because they do shrink as the fruit um, fills, uh, as the fruit cooks, it does shrink. And don't worry if they're like, you know, somebody's got more blueberries, uh-oh. All right, get that juice though. That's the good stuff. Give some of that juice to each of them. And, um, and the last thing we're gonna do is get them, get them covered. And I'm going to uh, just wipe my glove a little bit here. Now, I, I will mention Judy is a friend of mine and she has seen my kitchen. She knows how small it is. And I'm like, Judy, my kitchen is like the sink is right next to me. It's filled with stuff. <laughs> It's like the best part about cooking in my kitchen. I don't have to worry about it. Nobody can see it when I'm on Zoom. So I am going to pinch this. I didn't. I said I was going to pinch it, and I haven't really pinched it much, but I am going to do that now so that it breaks into like little clumps is even better than just sprinkles, although it'll be fine and sprinkled too. So get a, get a good amount of that. As it turns out, I don't think I've ever used all of the topping this way. Um, one of the things it says at the end of the recipe is if you want to make this in a like a nine by 13 pan, it's great. Um, double the recipe in terms of the quantities of things that you're, you know, the ingredients and um, put it in a nine by three, a nine by 13, and then just 
add a little like five or 10 minutes and you'd probably be able to use all of this, which is left over. So um, I'm going to stick that in the fridge and probably do something else with it. Uh, but for now, that's ready to go. And that is the dish, as they say. So I'm going to put these in the oven, uh, 350 oven for about 40 minutes. They may not get done before we finish up, but I'll send a picture. Um, and uh, you'll be able to see. Oh, you know what? Actually, I have a... Uh, I have one that I had last week, so I can show you what it looks like as it's finished. So, all right, any questions on the dessert, which is always the thing to start first. That's kind of fun, huh? Okay, any Connie, questions? this would be a good time to pose um, from Mimi. It doesn't have to do with the dessert, but it has to do with the King Arthur classes. Are they yep. online on Zoom? Yes, so that's how I started. They do them live, um, but you have to go to Vermont, which is not a bad thing. Vermont's a great place to go. But I didn't want to go to Vermont. I wanted to do it in my kitchen. So yes, they do Zooms. And I want to say we had 20 to 20. They maxed them at 22 people. And we see each other and everybody's, you know, the instructors will say, show me, you know, flip down your laptop so I can see how your dough looks. We made breads. Uh, yes, they are online and they're fabulous. So, I mean, they are like 50, 50 or $60 a class. I just have to mention that. So, and I just have to say the King Arthur flower place was great because I've been there because I'm from Vermont. So Jean's from Vermont. I'm sorry, Jean. I forgot to say that. That's right. Well, no, so, yeah. because we've gone there and you know, they have wonderful food and you can buy the bread and they have this really great store where you can buy all kinds of cooking stuff. And it's really fun. Oh, it's so, great. It's absolutely fabulous. It's fabulous. Okay. So I'm going to do a swap here and get ready for the chicken pasta. So if everybody can um, move to that recipe, and I'm gonna get my water boiling for the pasta. So, and you always put salt in your pasta. You want it to flavor, have a nice flavor before it, uh, it goes in. I don't do a lot. I mean, sometimes recipes call for like a tablespoon of salt in your pasta. I don't do that, but. Um, so I want to show Connie, you. excuse me, I just want to tell you that Kathleen Terrell said she's cooking along with the chicken recipe. And also, Excellent. Gretchen does have one question before you continue about the dessert. Do you think the crumble Perfect. would still be good without the nuts? I like to make it for a group that includes someone with a nut allergy. Absolutely. So the recipe originally from Ina did not have nuts. I added them. That's one of my additions. So absolutely, that would be great. And, um, and it would work really well. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. All right. So this is one of these recipes where you're marinating your tomatoes. And that to me is one of the best things you can do with tomatoes. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about olive oils while we're doing this. Um, so um, I love to use olive oils. Um, and I always get one that's less expensive, which is the one, the California and one that's a little bit richer. And the difference is not only about, you know, 20 bucks, but the difference is um, this is what a California, uh, it's called California olive oil, but it's called, I don't know if you've looked at it closely. My husband looked at this recently and said, it says it's California olive branch, but it's the global version, which is Argentina, Portugal, Chile, and 10% California. <laughs> so, Oops, right? I thought I was getting like California um, olive oil, which is fine. Argent all these other places make great olive oil. Portugal is like one of the best places to get olive oil. This one is an Italian olive oil. It's just, it's pure. It's really like grassy. They talk about it. It's fresh. Extra virgin olive oil is like the first press of olives. So it's the one that, that has a great flavor to it. And as they continue to press those olives, it gets a little bit less um, flavorful. So uh, I like this for um, a marinade. So this is a marinade. So I use this olive oil, a quarter cup, I think it is. Yeah, a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. And to that, I'm adding, um, this is about three quarters of a pound. I took cherry tomatoes of all different colors and I, go ahead, sorry. Question? Oh, no, okay. Um, I cut them in quarters, basically. Cherry tomatoes cut in quarters. Add them in um, and then add some basil and garlic. So um, basil is, you know, amazing. And uh, this is a teared, a torn, teared. It's a torn basil and it's about, what does it say there? Half a cup. Yeah, so I, I used about a half a cup of torn basil. And, you know, it's it's not, what I love about this is you could chiffonade it, which I learned in cooking school. Um, 
why bother? You know, it's really there for color and for flavor and to be infused with the garlic and the olive oil. So it is, uh, it is great. We're going to do this. I'm going to use the spoon that I had before and just give this a nice mix. I'm going to add uh, two cloves of garlic minced and feel free to use a garlic press. I use it all the time. I, I don't, you don't, you don't have to worry about the purity of chopping your own garlic. You can definitely use an olive press. Um, I just wouldn't, you, you know, I would prefer not to use a jar of olive, of, uh, excuse me, of garlic. Um, so I'd prefer to use something that's, that's fresh. Um, so that just looks amazing. And what it's gonna do as it sits for 15 minutes while we're making the rest of this chicken, it's gonna just infuse everything with that garlic and the tomatoes are gonna be really tasty. So I'm gonna put that off camera. It doesn't look as pretty as it does, there you go, um, in real life. It, it's just beautiful. So this dish is a really pretty dish and really simple. So we're now just gonna cook the chicken, which is pretty simple. Uh, I gotta get it out of the refrigerator. <laughs> well, let me do that. Um, this recipe calls for four chicken breasts. I go to Wegmans, they package their chicken in three. So we're making three. And these are big. I like to, you'll see, I always say, try to find smaller portion size chickens. Because these chicken breasts are like huge. These aren't so bad, but they're often huge. So I don't need that much protein. And I like to have less. Does this light bother anybody? I just realized my ring light is on the camera. Is it better? Judy, you're a good technology person. Do you think I should shut off the uh, the ring light? No, it's okay. Uh, uh, okay. Well, do you think you're recording? No, because I think it's um, the ring light is reflecting. But I think it's okay. All right, we won't. I, I think it looks fine. You know, I, I can okay. see it very well. It looks good. Sounds good. Okay, I want that. It's and it's kind of sh shedding light on here. Hopefully, um, now I'm going to use the second olive oil for this because I'm cooking with this. Cooking olive oil does not have to be so fancy. I'm sautéing the chicken with this. I'm using a cast iron skillet, which I just I cannot tell you how much I love cast iron skillets. This is a nine inch. I went and bought a ten inch. Um, they're just, they cook like nothing else. So I highly recommend And If anybody has issues with seasoning, I can tell you and washing, I can tell you what I do as I go, but I want this to get really hot. So I've got it on my hottest burner and I'm going to add some olive oil to it. I think it's like a tablespoon and get to know what a tablespoon looks like. So you don't really have to worry about it. Um, I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to add the chicken. It's not hot enough though. So I'm going to talk about um, the angel hair pasta. Um, the first time I made this, I made it with whatever pasta I had at home, but I do think angel hair is good because these flavors are pretty strong and you don't want the pasta to have a flavor. You want it just to be a vehicle for everything else that's got flavors with it. So, um, feel free to go with angel hair, something light like that, but you really could do what you want. Um, so the other thing I want to mention is Italian seasoning. So I use this for so much, this and herb de Provence. You really don't need to like buy individual ingredient. Um, you, you know, this has um, marjoram, rosemary, basil, thyme, savory, oregano, and sage. I mean, it's got great flavor to it. I use it in everything, hamburgers, chicken, everything. Um, fish, I put it on fish last night. We had cod, I use that. Um, it's just a, a really good mix. So the um, best thing to do is... By that and by Herb de Provence, which has a few different flavors. It's a little bit more delicate flavor. And I use that a lot for chicken um, or fish as well. So you can't see my stove. I apologize. I'm getting this so that it, it, it bubbles. The way you notice that is take a little bit of water in your hand. And um, if the water dances, it's ready. And it's ready. It sizzles. You can't hear that, but if you want, that's the best way to tell if your pan is ready. Um, and I'm going to get this on here. There's nothing on here right now. I'm just putting the skin side down. I'm going to big, so they're going to take a little bit longer than I wanted, but okay. And just let them sit there. So I was a, um, in a house at home when I grew up where everybody was peeking. I was peeking a lot under that. I'd look under that chicken like 10 times before I needed to. I'm gonna let it sit there at high heat, let it get some color. I'm gonna turn it over and then I'm gonna put the, the, um, herb, the uh, Italian seasoning and some salt and pepper on it then. So I'm gonna leave that here and I'm going to move on while that's cooking. This is gonna take the longest time. So I'm gonna let it cook. I'm gonna lower it just a tad because it is really hot. 
Can you, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear the sizzle. No? Okay. Um, I'm going to get this over here with salt and pepper. The next thing I'll talk about is the pasta. So the recipe calls for a half to a pound of pasta. Now, again, I can eat all of that, but I don't want to. So I'm, I'm, I bought a scale and I use it all the time. My scale tells me two ounces is what it says on the box is your, is your serving size. I, I give myself three. I give my husband four. I don't worry about that, but I don't want like four servings. A pound of, of um, angel hair is like four ounces each. So I don't, I don't need that. So we're, you know, we're, we can cut down a little thing and you don't even miss it because you've got all this chicken and all these beautiful tomatoes. So I'm going to test this for a minute here. I am going to be not ready. Okay. You want it to have nice color on the bottom. And what happens is if you keep turning it, you're changing the uh, temperature of it. So just let it sit there, let it caramelize. It will change, it will get you a good color, but it will also cook. It'll have a little stick a little bit, but at some point that caramelization makes it stop sticking and it sort of raises up above the, the pan surface. And it's much, that's when you know it's ready to turn. Okay, so let me um, see what else I can tell you about this recipe. So I've already um, uh, shredded my Parmesan cheese and I want to show you my... Uh, My little, uh, this was from Pampered Chef like 20 years ago. I don't know if you can get one, but it's the kind they have in the, in the restaurants where, I mean, other than like just one of these uh, graters, which is nice, but, um, you know, I don't, I can't use it as well. This is the easy though. I mean, you can just get your Parmesan and grate it, but you buy fresh Parmesan. You know, I, I, went, I watched a cooking show the other day and one of them, people had, like a jar of Parmesan, and I thought, wait a minute, it's so easy to just keep the block and do it when you need it fresh. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, that's got some color. I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna put some um, some uh, Italian seasoning right on it, on the side that's been cooked. I'm going to turn it over again so it's fine. Some salt and pepper. Okay. So I find the chicken breasts can get tough when you saute them like this. That's one of the reasons I like smaller chicken breasts because they cook more quickly. It's all about not overcooking them and cooking them for too long. So um, I'm not sure, I'm not convinced these are going to be as tender as they would be if they were smaller. So look, when you go to a grocery store, look for the smallest chicken breasts you can find and just know that it's going to be a little bit easier to get it nice and tender. Okay, so I, while that's cooking, I am going to move on to the salad, the um, corn salad. And um, I'm going to start with my ear of corn and a wet paper towel. So I don't know if any of you remember, if you lived in Middleton, a woman named Loyola Sylvan. Loyola was a gem. She was a volunteer in our bookshop at the library. I'm a volunteer at the library. And um, she's since gone, but she taught me to wrap up a uh, ear of corn in a wet paper towel, you know, kind of drain. Uh, rinse it, I should say, a wet, and then you uh, remove the, the total moisture as much as you can. Uh, microwave it for three minutes. Does anybody have any questions about the chicken recipe yet? If so, just put them in the chat box, and I will pose them to Connie. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do in the meantime with the corn is I'm going to uh, get my bowl, my uh, salad bowl, and I've got this really pretty white bowl, which I love. I get a lot of white stuff here. I know it's kind of boring, but I do love it. Um, and we're going to start with, I'm going to just build the salad with the ingredients here. So we're going to start with um, some red onion, and I diced it, um, and feel free to use one of those mini chops. I use mini chops all the time. 
And if you don't like red onion, or your guests may not, make it bigger so they can pull it out. But the flavor is really good. Um, and then I've got some walnuts that I'm going to wait on. So we're going to hold up on that. Um, and I'm going to make the dressing, which is olive oil. We're going to use the good stuff and vinegar. And the vinegar that I um, first saw was, um, I thought about was a some red wine vinegar or a red uh, apple cider maybe vinegar. Uh, but I love the summer because you can get all kinds of, red, of vinegars. And this is a peach vinegar. And I thought this would be great. Um, and it could, it could blend nicely with the fact that we're having a dessert with peaches. So it's, um, this is a gustare. That's one of those places in Mashpee, I think it is, that does tastings. But you can get peach vinegar anywhere. So I'm going to put in um, three. No, I'm going to put two and two instead of three and three because it's just two of us here. But it's basically equal parts vinegar to olive oil. And that's all you really need to know. So, And um, you can tell my chicken looks like it smells like it's getting cooked. So we've got our, our uh, olive oil and vinegar there with the onion. And that will sort of tone down the onion a little bit as it sits there. Um, and the last thing we're going to do is get the corn ready. I've got feta cheese, by the way, measured out here, and some walnuts. But you could use goat cheese, you could use Parmesan, you could use almost anything. All right, let me check these two. Okay, that's working well. That, I think the point is what. Right, a little more spike on the side of the, um, on this side of the chicken. And lower it now, just to finish it up. So these chickens are very large. I'm gonna let them sit there and I'm gonna finish talking to you about the corn salad. All right, so our corn is done. If you're doing more, if you're doing more than one, uh, more than three, two or three um, uh, cobs, add a minute. So I had three today when I did the other ones earlier because we're going to use four corns or ears of corn. Um, I let it, uh, I think it was four minutes. So that, and that just made sure it was cooked. But it looks beautiful, the corn. So by the way, this is from Wegmans. I was trying to get to a farm stand today. I didn't make it. So I went to Wegmans this morning and this was already peeled, husked and shucked, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's really sweet. I have to say, I don't know where they're getting their corn from, but the markets are having, having, having some good time. This is pretty hot. So I may not do well. I'm going to try it. I'll put a glove on. And um, Connie, um, this is, yeah. I'm going to interrupt you to ask this from Joan. She says, is the corn cooked in just three minutes or is it undercooked? No, it, it's crunchy. I will say it's crunchy, but I like it that way. So it's, if, if you need it longer, then put it longer. But try it at three and then see how it, how it tastes for you. But I like it at three. All right, I'm going to get a knife. I need my nice big knife here. Hold on a second. Here it is. Okay, I've got a big knife here. And I'm going to just, can you see this a little bit? Yeah, we can see it. I can see it. Yep. It's really hot. I'm just going to tell you that. It's really hot. So it's too hot to do much, but I can do a little bit of it. And you're just, it's so much easier to cut it now. You could actually, I've made salads with corn and not cooked it at all. But I just find that it's a little bit too crunchy then. Um, it's delicious and there's nothing wrong with eating it raw. But I'd rather it be cooked and um, enjoy it. I like this uh, microwave method. We always just put it in the hot water. Well, you know what? And I'll tell you, things boil in the hot water. And I'm a big proponent of roasting vegetables instead of boiling them. Uh -huh. Steaming is okay, but the water just waters down the flavor. And so this just, it microwaves and it's kind of in its own juices. That is great. That's great. It's really simple, Jean. Really, yeah. really simple. Good, good, good. I hope my chef okay. is watching this. That's good. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Jean's husband, Craig, is on the call, I think, or he's going he's to be. He's been doing he's all the cooking, you guys, for 42 years. <laughs> Whoa. I'm very lucky. Very you lucky. are very lucky. I'm glad yes. you know that. Yes, I am. And he's very good at cooking. I'm flipping the, very good cook. flipping the chicken around. And everybody knows the hardest thing to do is know when chicken's cooked. So I have a, you know, I there's two ways or two components to that. And one is to um, feel it with a, a your finger, which is pretty hot, but um, now I can tell it's still really squishy, so it's not cooked yet. So I'm going to cover it a little bit and let it cook a little more <laughs> and uh, lower the heat, and that'll help it cook up a little bit faster. All right. And um, I won't put the pasta on yet because we don't need that. That's only going to take about four minutes. The pasta and boil, the water is boiling, and it'll sit there, which is fine. All right, so I'm going to get the other ingredients for the salad. So this is the corn that I shelled earlier. And um, it, as you can see, it's, it's kind of clumpy, actually. What's nice about doing it when it's hot I waited till it was cold for this. Um, it's hot, it comes right off and it's not in clumps like this. So I'm gonna have to go through it and sort of declump it, so to speak. But I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the corn and put it in with the um, olive oil and the red onion. So I'm gonna get that over here in front so you can see it going in. Again, lots of great colors. And if it's, if you've got too many clumps, that doesn't matter either. People aren't going to care because it's a nice, sweet, sweet recipe. So I don't know if any of you have been to Trevi in Mashpee. Um, it's at Mashpee Commons. It's a great little restaurant. And this salad is a riff off of theirs. Um, it was one of the salads. The first time I ever went there, we had this corn salad with arugula. And uh, I hear things sizzling at me. So I'm just making sure everything's good. And I'm going to add the warm. It's better. This salad's better cold, but I'm going to add the warm in with the cold so it should cool it down. All right. All right. So I'm going to mix this around and just get it mixed in with the olive oil and the vinegar. And I may need another tablespoon because now that I realize that I put a whole ingredients, uh, the whole four ears of corn. So we're going to be eating this for a couple of days, which is fine. So let me go back and put another tablespoon in. This peach, you know, everybody's got all these, these places have these great flavors, peach, pomegranate, um, just, you know, great summer flavors. And the peach in particular is one of my favorites. I just think it's such a nice so we're going to do that. Okay, what else am I going to add? Oh, it's going to have salt and pepper, obviously. Um, let me add some salt and pepper. First, I'm going to check my chicken. That's getting me really more cooked. Okay, that's good. So um, I am going to put the pasta in in a minute here, but I'm going to put some salt and pepper on the salad. And... Again, I'm, I'm cutting back. It's probably a quarter teaspoon of salt. And just make it look so pretty. All right, now. Um, the arugula. So arugula, um, I couldn't find arugula. Today I have arugula, but I couldn't find it the first time I wanted to make this recipe. And I use spinach, and spinach is really good too. But what you're looking for, the corn is so sweet. You want um, something that's going to offset that sweetness, and and arugula and um, it's and spinach, but arugula in particular is um, is like peppery, and um, it's great. But you have to like the taste. So if you don't use spinach or even anything else, but you need some sort of a green here, so um, I would add it to that. Okay, so I've got I've got that ready, um, and let's see what's else. And then I've got my walnuts ready and my Pepper. I mean, my uh, salt and pepper is already in there. Okay, walnuts, feta. That's it, feta. All right. So I'm going to take a moment just to clean my table here, so I can show you things as they come off. Um. And let me test the chicken one more time here. Oh, 
um, instant read thermometer, which I highly recommend everybody to get one of these. It's um, Thermopen, and you can get them at any store, but there are uh, they're, they're less expensive versions, which are fine too. But when you open it, it immediately will tell you the temperature of your chicken. And what you're looking for is at least 160, and I'm getting it, so that's good. Yeah. Great. So that's the trick if you need to just, you know, get it quick and cooking more quickly to um, get it, um, cover it, and that'll help. All right. I'm going to finish this. I'm going to shut off the heat on the chicken. Let that sit. I'm going to put the pasta into the boiling water. So I measured out my pasta. And this is my angel hair right here. I use Barilla, but you can use anything you like. And... Uh, just make sure that you put it in and you separate it. Oops. Oops. That's a bad thing here in the kitchen, right? Oops. <laughs> it, uh, a few of them ended up on the floor. Oh, well. And when I used to do these cooking demonstrations in places, I could never find what I needed. You know, I love doing these in my kitchen. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen, by the way. I should have said that right up front. It's so much easier to do these kinds of demos and be able to say, oh, I need a fork. And it's right here. So, all right. But you want to make sure you get your um, pasta so that it's not clumpy. And you may have to do that every once in a while. Look at the instructions on the Barilla package. And it says four to five minutes. We're going to go for four. Oh, I just uh, timed out. 13 minutes was the other one. Okay. Oops. Hold on. Okay, four minutes on that, and then I need another eight on the on the uh, on the dessert. Okay, so I'm going to add this uh, arugula, and I'm going to just mix it in. This is kind of the last thing you do. You don't really have to break it up, but you can if you want, and it just makes it look a little prettier. Um, I'm going to use uh, about half of the bag, but I have a bowl that's too small, so I'm going to go and get another bowl. All right, we're going to put this all in this big bowl. Much easier to do this. Okay, can you see? You know, this camera is not as great to be able to see. I apologize. But the colors are just really, really pretty. So we're going to put all that in. And then I'm going to add... The uh, you want what you're doing. You want to make sure that the arugula gets some of that dressing because the corn is very well dressed. But you want the uh, arugula to be as well. And don't you know if you don't like arugula or you just, just want to try a little bit, definitely err on the side of less because it is kind of a strong flavor. But you definitely want to you know make sure you've got enough so that you do enjoy that flavor. Okay, I'm gonna add some um, walnuts to it or anything you like. I love walnuts. So, and we're gonna add some feta cheese to it. Honey, that looks delicious. It's going to be great. I could even make that. <laughs> See, Jean, I love that. A recipe for everyone, right? <laughs> right. As much on here as you need or want. And then um, <laughs> it's just, it's a really pretty recipe as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you'll uh, you'll enjoy it. So I'm going to put this all together at the very end. We'll sort of look at, look at how everything came out at the end. Um, all right. Let me now... Again, it's in that big sink. It's good that you don't see inside the sink because it is a mess. All right, I'm going to take the chicken off and I'm going to give the chicken a cut. We're going to uh, get them ready to, for the pasta to be strained. And we've got Parmesan chicken, oh, I mean, Parmesan cheese all ready for the pasta. So that's good. So I need to just take a quick look here and see what we've got here. The bruschetta. I'm going to take a peek at my dessert. 725. Almost now. Oh, they're looking good. Oh, and they're bubbly. Oh, they smell so good. Okay. So I mean, you're not supposed to say that about your own food, I know, but they do smell so good. You'll, you'll see when you make it. You'll see. Um, all right. Let me just see where everything is good. Okay. So I'm going to take this chicken. And I'm going to bring a piece of it over here, or maybe I'll bring the board to the chicken. That might be safer. All right, so there's the chicken. So as you can see, it looks 
looks good. It's, uh, again, these lights aren't great, but uh, 47 minutes, okay. So I've got my, what I like to do, so the recipe calls for put everything together in a big bowl and serve it. I like to get a nice pretty white bowl and I have two different sizes, but I'm gonna use this one today just as a little, it's a just, you know, um, I was gonna say Christmas tree shop. You can't find those anymore. Uh, probably like home goods. I think I got this at home goods, like a four pack. And I use them all the time. I mean, they're just, they're more elegant. I have even a larger size um, that I like as well. But I try again to sort of uh, train myself not to uh, eat that much. <laughs> But, okay, Connie, sorry. can I ask you one question from Tara? She says, how much spinach? Oh, so a typical bag is like five to six ounces. Use half of it and see how you like it. And then add whatever you want to the salad. I mean, the salad is really up to your personal flavor. Okay. Does that answer the question, Tara? I hope all right, I'm going to just uh, see how this pasta is. It looks like it's ready, but I'm just going to take a little taste. There's just right. Okay. Oh, boy, it's going to be hard to find a place in the sink to put the water in. Eek. All right, so let me... Uh... Okay, this is where you see me lifting heavy hot water pots. All right, so I'm gonna pour this pasta in. I'm gonna put it back into the pot. So when you do this with your pot of pasta, by the way, these plastic things will melt. Um, you wanna make sure that you, um, if you're not gonna use this right away, you're not gonna serve it right away, like if the timing was off and the chicken wasn't ready, Put a little olive oil in the pasta because it's it's definitely needs some olive oil to um, keep it from sticking. But we're going to use it right away. So I'm going to cut some chicken up. And when you're cutting chicken, what I like to do is do it at sort of a little angle. Yeah, the chicken's perfectly cooked. And it's cutting well, so I think it's probably tender. All right, so that's, that is just beautiful. It's actually just, just cooked just right. Okay, so we've got our chicken, we've got our pasta, we've got our tomatoes, and we've got the Parmesan cheese. Is that everything that goes on top? I think it's it is. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna take a uh, tongs here and I'm gonna take my bowl. And so as I started to say, instead of putting it all in one big bowl and serving it that way, I, I would do it by serving person, you know, by the person you're serving for. And so this is going to be for Jean. That looks delicious. <laughs> Already, right? Doesn't it? I know. It does. And, and have some fun with the chicken, you know, put the chicken in like little positions here, or however you want to do that. Three pieces. And then take some of these tomatoes, which are just beautiful now. Can't see those. They're off camera. Sorry. Hold on. I'm just gonna show you these tomatoes look so pretty. The juices are just like down there hanging in the bottom. We're gonna bring them up to the top and I'm gonna use a spoon that has a uh, no slots on it. And you just take a nice big portion. Of, look how pretty that is. Beautiful. And then we're gonna take some of this fresh Parmesan. Oops. The summer harvest. It's really a summery recipe. It really isn't it? Is. I, mean, I think it's just it's just a beautiful summer recipe. And just like, you know, that's not much cheese. It looks like a lot. So what I do is I trick myself the top flavor. When you first bite into that, you want the cheese there. And you'll find yourself, you don't need to put as much as you think because this is so nicely shredded and airy. And then the last thing I do is top the grate. Oh, a little extra olive oil. And this is where you use the good stuff again. Just to be sure, now I think this is fine, but sometimes because the pasta is not, um, in fact, I'm gonna put a little olive oil in the pasta. Uh, because the pasta is not um, with sauce on it and mixed up together, I wanna be sure there's a, enough olive oil and enough flavor to the pasta. And I saw Lydia Bastianich do this every day. Every time I watch Lydia Bastianich, she, finish, she finishes every dish with a little drizzle of oil. And Judy, I know you told me, I think you do this too. So it's like a great thing, just a little drizzle. 
just to be sure that you got that lovely flavor of olive oil. So that's that. Okay. I'm going to move this back. I'm going to get everything out here. And I think our dessert is almost ready as well. I'm going to move this chicken someplace. Now, Connie, does Jean cook your husband? He does. He has a repertoire of a few items. Uh -huh. And um, one of them is a great chicken dish that he makes. He does a lot of fish. And uh, it's good. He does he does well. But I'm I would say I'm the primary person who cooks in this. Mm -hmm. And that's fine because I like it. Although I'll tell you, the pandemic did me in. Cooking three meals a day, like who, 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 who I signed up for that, right? Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. I've got I've gotten back into it now, though I'm much better than when I was like really dragging before. Okay, I just want us to have you see all of the things sort of together. Um, and now our salad, I'm going to use this other bowl for the salad. That would be nice. That's a beautiful salad, really. The yeah. salad is so yummy. I just have to say, you have to like corn, um, but it's, it's just a really fun salad. And you could, if you wanted to take it over the top, you could um, put some, um, uh, Candy the walnuts if you wanted to do that, but oh. I don't think it's necessary. So, um, okay, that's the second thing, and I'm going to now. I'm going to the great reveal is the is the dessert. So let me just see how that's doing, and uh, and then we've done it in an hour. That's yep. pretty good. I have to say, I love that that we can do these kinds of recipes in an hour, but you do have to prep in advance. So, who made the chicken? Have you made it? Has it how's it come out? You guys can unmute yourself if you want to. To yeah, we'd love it if you would actually. What the? What's happening? We we made the chicken tonight earlier for dinner and it came out really well. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Is that Tara? Yes, yes, it is. Excellent, excellent. Well, I hope you use it and tweak it to make it your own. Um, but I think it's got you know you could also make this with shrimp if you wanted to do something other than chicken. Shrimp would be great. Mm. Right. Let me look at these. Oh, these desserts are ready. Let me go. Let me. And they smell. I mean, the blueberries and the peaches just smell amazing. Okay, I have to make some move mo room. Nice. Okay. Make room for the pan. Oh my God! Do these look yummy? Okay. So what happens with these is. I have to find a little plate to put it on, something to put it on. Oh, I guess I can put it right there. So I'm gonna take one of these to show you. Oops. So uh, Connie, Kathleen Charles says, thank you so much. We are enjoying the pasta chicken dinner right now. Yummo. Oh, that is great to hear. Excellent. Well, let me just show you, this is the dessert and um, it's bubbly, it's crunchy. Um, I am gonna dip into this one so you can see what it looks like inside. And um, I, had I had cheese and crackers for dinner, by the way. I hope you all ate something. <laughs> if I'm not even gonna dive in as soon as this is finished. <laughs> but it is just, you can see the, the hopefully you can see that. Looks wonderful. It's like steamy hot, first of all, but the peaches are just beautifully cooked and, and very soft with a little crunch for the um, nuts and or you could skip the nuts as we know, and a little um, crumble on the top. Again, make it at, at, with apples or pears or peaches alone or just blueberries and strawberries, whatever you want. So um, looks good. Beautiful. Beautiful. So that's the menu. We'll all be over. <laughs> <laughs> So what um, what other questions? Anybody have any other questions? I'm trying to think if I, so I'll mention something. Um, want, um, the olive oil. Um, if you live in Milton, Craft and Crew sells this olive oil, which is the wine store in Cent on Central Avenue. Uh, Jean, Jean Paul uh, and Gabby, I think her name is, they will tell you about this. They got me started on it, but any good, you know, liquor stores sell wine, sell olive oil, but any good Italian, you know, specialty store or any good grocery will have a nice, uh, a nice olive oil. Um, looking at the notes that I had that I wanted to mention. Um, 
told you about Trevi. That's a good spot to stop when you're in the cave. And I think that might be, that'd be it. Okay, you're getting some thank yous from Joe. Oh, thank you so much, Mimi. Great, great demo. Yeah. Thanks so much. Great. Betsy, Great. can't wait to eat my chicken dish. Cecilia, thank you. Great as always. Mimi, cast iron pan. Oh, thank you, Mimi. Great. So um, cast iron pan. Um, so I bought a cast iron pan many, 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 like probably 20 years ago, and I was afraid to wash it. And so I never got used to it, and I ended up throwing it away. So about five years ago, I bought this new one. And Oh, Mary Alice was on. Thanks, Mary Alice. Um, I bought this new pan and I seasoned it as they tell you to, which I can't remember right now. I think it's like you put olive oil on it and you bake it for some period of time. So it kind of seals in. And once you do that, you can do anything like you would any other pan. So I fry hamburgers. I fry fish in there. I fry everything. And what I do is I put a little water in it when I, while we're eating dinner, I put a little water in it just so that it kind of sinks into whatever's sitting in the pan. Um, and I use a scrub brush, one of these little scrub brushes with soap. I, mean, I wash it like anything and I clean it, clean it, clean it so that it's clean and then dry it immediately. That's the key is don't let it get rusty. That's, that's the problem. I let mine get rusty. Don't let it get rusty. Dry it as soon as it's clean and then get yourself a spray. I get olive oil spray here and give it a little spray on the pan, just like a tablespoon, not even that and take a paper towel and wipe it in and you're re-seasoning it. And you'll, you, mine's five years old and I, I haven't, I'm, I'm loving it. I use it all the time. I even make pizzas in it. I do everything in it. I mean, it's just, it's stir fry. It's great. It's big, it's a big pan. It must be for pizza. They're popular. Oh, you know what? Nine inch, so it's like half of the um, pizza dough that you'd buy in the grocery store. Cut that pizza dough in half and you, um, I can't remember the, the the method, but you basically uh, cook the dough in there and then you flip it over and you put the the vegetables or whatever else you're putting on top and then let it cook on the other side. It's pizza in those pans is fabulous. I mean, they're just, you know, I bought a whole cookbook on cast iron cooking and it, you can do everything. Oh, no, that's great. Oh, Amy, did that help? Oh, that was I was good. just going to say, I was going to, I was going to put in a plug for the cast iron pan too. It, it really cooks more evenly. Um, than another, than um, you know, my amateur pan or whatever, you know, and, and um, the pizza is unbelievable. We make it and we don't, we don't flip it over. We just just like, I can't oven. remember. It's been a long time. So I, maybe think, you, I think my son makes it. You, you, you cook the dough first and then you put the toppings on, you stick it back in. Great. Um, but it's, it's unbeatable. It's great. Right. I, I, I think it's like the one pan you need. I have a lot of other pans that I never use anymore. Yeah. I do use, I do cook eggs in other pans than that. I don't usually cook eggs just because you can tell like to the house, I'm in a condo. So now I can smell the chicken that I made. And, you know, you get some of that in the pan. Sometimes you find yourself, you really have to scrub it to get, get the smells out. And uh, so I use something else for eggs, but that's about it. Hmm. Good. Okay. So Tara says, thank you. Gretchen says, is there a wine you would pair with this meal? So it depends on what, you know, I'm not, I, I don't go by chicken, fish, white, you know, meat, pork, red, because then we'd never drink red wine. And we both like red wine, but because um, we don't use a lot, use, eat a lot of beef, but um, you could use a Pinot Noir would be really nice, you know, because it sort of has an Italian flavor to it. You know, even a Chianti, if you have a nice Chianti or you have something that you enjoy, um, you know, anything. But if you're a white wine drinker, um, I'm not a big oaky Chardonnay. I like a little bit of a um, the Chardonnay that I like, and I'm going to not not remember the name of it. Oh gosh, I'll, I'll have to think about the name of it. But um, a Chardonnay that's not so tannic, because I think with kind of Italian flavors and with the salad that's kind of tart, you don't want a tannic um, wine. So something, and and the, I will mention another white wine which goes really well with these with the corn. It would do well as well is like um, a Riesling. So Rieslings are not all sweet. People think of Riesling, they think of sweet. It's a white wine that's really just got the, a nice balance and it goes really well with food. So, Okay, thank you. And Gretchen also says, thanks so much. I look forward to making these dishes. Great. And Great. John, John says, John says, thank you. He also says, is your pan a particular brand? Lodge, L-O-D-G-E. Lodge is the one that sells 
and makes the brand that everybody has, I think. I'm sure other people, other companies do, but Lodge is definitely the leader of cast iron pans. Okay. Yeah. Any other Great. questions, anyone? Okay, let me mute your Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, for everyone, for being here, Connie. That was wonderful. Very Thanks inspiring. So much. Enjoy the season. Please enjoy all the grapefruit and vegetables. Go to your farmer's market. Go to Wilson Farms. Judy and I have gone to Wilson Farms. It's fabulous. Um, and I go to Wardsbury Farm because I live in Canton now. And, and you know, the farmer's market in Milton, Canton. I mean, there's just so much good stuff right now. Take advantage of it. Because soon we'll be looking at tomatoes and saying, oh, they're great tomatoes at the market. And <laughs> so Kathleen, like, Kathleen says, yeah. love this class. Thanks so much. So, oh, oh, thank you so much, Kathleen. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And um, we'll see you next time. See Happy you next time. Summer. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.